from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for Dell EMC World 2017. This is the Cube's eighth year of covering since the inception of the Cube. EMC World, which is now called Dell EMC, with the first year of the combination <laughs> coming together. Uh, exciting, a lot of storylines here. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE, and my co-host with SiliconANGLE, Paul Gillen. Our next guest, Jeff Boudreaux, who's the president of Dell EMC Storage Division. It sounds weird to say that because EMC used to be a storage company, now they're part of Dell Technologies with a zillion brands. Jeff, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So first, explain quickly what the storage division is because Chad Sackick does, um, Converge. Converge infrastructure, but you own all the storage. Correct. So just quickly, just. Yeah, real, describe real, what you do. real quick, keeping it simple, if you think about the components of the building blocks, you have Ashley running compute, you have Tom Burns running network, you have myself running storage, and you have Beth Failing running uh, data protection. And then Chad's the Converge platform, so when we integrate those solutions, Chad has that piece. So, yes, all storage, and that would be. Uh, legacy or Heritage Dell storage, but also Heritage and Legacy EMC storage. All that came together, so um, just massive revenue, massive amounts of customers, uh, and then obviously, you know, tons of engineers around the world. You got a lot of work to do. Um, <laughs> obviously storage is not going away, it's changing radically and, and in a different way. Certainly cloud is accelerating it. The data center world is changing. They call it data center, they don't call it server center. They call it the data center because there's more data coming. Yep. Uh, so I got to ask you, one of my favorite quotes in your keynote this morning was, we have self-driving cars, mm -hmm. why don't we have self-driving storage or autonomous storage? Yep. Which is provocative but also very relevant. Can you explain yep. what you meant by that and, and, and let's dig, dig deeper into that. Yeah, I mean actually it's, a, it's one of my favorite topics actually. So what I'm, I have these notion of the, the pillars of innovation, right? And I want to start looking at, to your point, things are changing in the markets and the, in the way customers are using our products. And I want to embrace that change and innovate around that change. Um, and the notion of uh, the day in the life of the storage admin, the day in the life of the, the data center admin, the day in the life of just about anybody using the products, we got to make it simpler, right? It, it goes back to consumer simplicity, a lot of this stuff. Um, and what we're trying to do there is actually make the, the storage um, be smart enough to actually just take care of itself. It's kind of the set it and forget it notion. So we, as part of autonomous storage, we look at four attributes simplistically in regards to how you would have a self-driving system. <laughs> uh, the first one is about being application-centric, because at the end of the day, it's all about the app and the workload. We all know that, right? And that's what the users care about. So the way I kind of looked at that this morning is the example is that's like telling your car where you want to go, or is it a turn-by-turn -turn decision, right, that you would give it. The second thing is about being policy driven. And on that, you'd say, hey, listen, do I want to take the fastest route or do I want to take the scenic route? Yeah. Right, simplistically. And then, I'm going to be honest with you, that stuff's relatively easy and we do a bunch of that stuff today. Really, when it starts to get to a next level is when the stuff becomes self-aware. Right, understanding its resources and, and then understanding if you're in or out of those boundaries. So am I you know, swerving out of my lane? Uh, do I have enough gas? Dot, 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 right, as an example. And then where it gets really powerful is the fourth component for me is self-optimization. Self and that's being able to, understanding what being yourself aware and then making a, a better outcome for your customer. At the end of the day, that could be, hey, there's not enough charging stations to get to your destination, or you don't have enough charge, or better yet, the storage will actually, or the system would tell you, hey, take this path, there's enough charging stations, I'll get you there on time and safely. Right? So you'd be very happy if you had the brand bumper sticker of the Tesla of storage. Absolutely. Um, to your point about the, the stations, you know, people love Tesla, it's very sexy, it's relevant. Yep. I got to ask you about machine learning, it's obviously AI is hyped up. Yep. We call it art, not artificial intelligence, more augmented intelligence. Yep. That's a better definition because artificial intelligence is this weak, weak word, but <laughs> it doesn't really exist, it's kind of been around there. But augmentation of value, is about machine learning and deep learning. These are the learning systems you mentioned, um, self-optimization. That's basically learning machines. That's right. What are you guys doing around big data, I mean big data, machine learning, and some of these things? Can so you... we're doing a handful of things. Uh, so I'm, oh, on the keynote I mentioned uh, built-in analytics, and there's two things. You know, uh, Dell EMC, we store, protect, and secure more data than anybody else in the world, bar none. So, it, but it's, you know, and I used to joke, EMC used to be known for where information lives. Dell Technologies and Dell EMC has to be known for where information comes alive, right? And actually providing value and generating value for our customers. Um, and you know, so what we're going to do is we're going to have built-in capabilities into the array, but also we're going to plug into the broader ecosystem you know, with uh, analytics and service providers to really help drive that value in that creation. So you'll see a lot more around the storage itself, around that self-learning and understanding that kind of the core components of an array. 
what makes it run healthy or unhealthy, enables the customer to uh, better utilize and add more, more, uh, more value to their stack, but then also going into that broader ecosystem, making sure that they really can drive that value to their customers and to their business. What, what pieces will you be delivering first? Uh, on the storage side itself, specifically, uh, we, will be, uh, we already have a lot of products that have uh, the capability, the, probably two or three of the capabilities, so between app-centric, uh, 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 policy-driven, and self-awareness, those are the ones we're on right now, big time. And I have a team focused on the, the, the machine learning so we can really start self-optimizing. We actually just, um, we mentioned, I don't know if the guys that were on or other folks we've had on the show talked about a thing called Cloud IQ. Yes, yeah, they did. Uh, but actually, yeah. so that was something that we built a SaaS model in the cloud, which is all about so, machine learning. So that's part of this, yes. uh, this whole uh, rollout. Ab absolutely. It's, it's moving, back, moving to the cloud eventually. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's critical. So another quote that I'm from your keynote, because you had some great sound bites. Isilon, one of the product port products in your portfolio, Isilon is known to be the gold standard for storage in the genome sequencing. Obviously, um, with the massive amounts of compute that's available, certainly cloud computing has now made it possible to do amazing things with the data, make that literally come alive and may hopefully people can live longer. Mm. But genome sequencing is actually do doable and price points that it's crazy. The last, the last, probably the last two years alone, it's it's, dra it's dr dramatically and drastically just reduced. But why is Isilon the gold standard for sequence? What specifically is it that's great about it? Well, it's basically in regards to the data structure and how we can process that big data, right, and make sense of it quickly as we analyze it. There's nothing faster in the market. And, and it'd be interesting, now that we've brought out the, the Isilon all flash ray with the new Infinity platform, we've taken something that two years ago took weeks, down to days, down to hours, and with the all flash rate, we've taken it down to minutes, 22 minutes to be exact. So I got to ask you, I'll let you think about the portfolio question I'm sure. going to ask in about a minute, how you're going to rectify all that, where the overlap is or <laughs> isn't, so you can work on that. But the next question is, um, um, the industry. Yep. You're not seeing a lot of startups trying to do what Isilon did. You heard, you know, Isilon guys leaving, starting companies, and everyone's kind of pivoting. But you are seeing startups in the white spaces, data protection, so question, how hard is it to do a startup right now and get venture funding? Because it seems to be scale as the issue. Yeah. And it's hard to be a quote, quote, pure storage company. Yes. Uh, pun intended. No, it's pure good, storage, good, the last I, company I to it. challenge you guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, know, I, you know, and I'd also throw NetApp in there as well. You know, it's, it's, it's standing on their own in regards to that. Uh, but this market, let's be clear, this market's consolidating, and that's good for us. Um, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, right? So at our size and scale, Dell and EMC and Dell Technologies together, our size, our scale, I have buying power un, unmatched by anybody. And it's going to be hard, you know, there's a lot of companies. Hard not to crack for a startup to come in and, no, and, yeah, and it can be the table really, stakes are too high. Right. So in regards to innovation, spend and R&D, uh, value chain that we get, efficiency, buying power, Intel, I mean, think about all the stuff around the whole ecosystem, it's just really hard to do. So this market's consolidating, we're good with that. What I want to do is consolidate this market faster and I want to drive more share of this market in regards to that. And I think it's really tough. So you've seen small guys be bought recently, right? Some guys, they're not doing well, some people- Accu um, hires. Maybe some of these orange people are really in the red, as <laughs> going back to your pun, yeah. right? So they're, they're struggling, right? Some of these guys are struggling. So I really think this is an opportunity as we force this market as it consolidates for, for us, I think it's a real big thing. All right, thing. so the question on the consolidation, sorry Paul, to interrupt, but okay, I get the consolidation. Now the growth, we're going to put the pedal to the metal is going to come from where? A mature you market, you got a mature market, you're consolidating, you lock that in. So that's big dollars, by the way, it's not like small numbers. Yeah. And the table stakes are high, so startups so yeah. aren't going to crack that nut. But then you got to have the growth strategy where there's a hockey stick opportunity. Yeah, so from a storage perspective, let's be clear, they're going to have the growth that's going to come through things like HCI, it's going to come through things like software defined in regards to how we do that, right? And that's obviously part of, software defined is part of my portfolio as well. So, It'll be a journey in, in regards to where we grow, but the traditional space is, is huge, let's be huge. very clear, it's massive, yeah. right? We have to do that and do that extremely well and protect that and make sure our customers are taken care of, but as they go on their journey, if it's software defined or cloud or what have you, we want to make sure we're relevant can help with that. Yeah. Um, so one, we'll be taking share in that space. There'll be opportunities as the consumption models, the technology and the deployment models change, will be front and center in all those. Uh, speaking about software defined, I mean mm -hmm. that essentially that can, can deposition some of the storage elements below Absolutely. it. Uh, Cisco is wrestling with that right now where they sort of, they sort of uh, uh, you know, held off for, for a couple of years on software defined networking, they're finally embracing it. What are you doing to, to balance you know, the need for your, the, the, the elements of your portfolio to shine with also the need to get customers to software definition? Absolutely, so right now, I mean, it, it's a journey, let's be clear, right? And so I have a, actually a large customer that was on stage with me, I'll leave their name out if anybody wants to watch who I talked to on day one, they'll know who I'm talking about. Um, they're on a journey. 
right? And so right now, today, they're probably one of the, I would say, leaders in software-defined storage and driving software-defined storage as part of their their IT transformation mm -hmm. in their data centers. Um, they're 20% software defined, 80% still traditional physical infrastructure. They have a big stake in the ground that you know, in three or four short years, 2020, they're going to be 50-50, right? And these are right. guys that are leading and driving. So just give the folks uh, a little bit of balance in regards to yes, that's where the growth will come from, this is where kind of the appeal is, but it will be a journey in how we get, you know, get through that, right? But also for me, going back to scale and Dell Technology, I have products like Scale.io, I have Virtual Isilon, I have Virtual Unity in regards to what we do with ECS as an object store, so file, block, or object, we have it. And then I have wonderful 14G servers from my friend Ashley and the compute team. Yeah. Go well together. So Pat Kessler, <laughs> Pat Kessler was talking about um, developer-ready infrastructure. Yeah. You mentioned on your keynote, I thought it was clever, the cloud-ready yes. storage. Talk about that dynamic because um, love this sound bite. Storage has to be cloud ready, cloud connected, build out on off-prem and live in a multi-cloud world. Uh, not, not, don't come on the multi-cloud, we think that's going to happen. Not ready it's for prime happen. time right now. <laughs> hybrid certainly is happening. Oh yes. Uh, there's some latency issues on multi-cloud, sure. but we don't want to digress. Yep. But hybrid is definitely happening, but multi-cloud is the gateway, hybrid cloud is the gateway to multi-cloud. Dealing with legacy to cloud native, that gap with hybrid, how do you look at that? Because that's truly going to be a great opportunity for you, and being cloud storage ready, what you, um, I'm sorry, cloud ready. Cloud ready. Ready storage, how do you make that happen? Yeah, so cloud connection's the big, one of the big ones for me, so the ability to connect to the cloud and allow people to move, seamlessly move data in and out of the cloud, so depending if it's a traditional on-prem or off-prem. So we have great technologies uh, for file, uh, there's, uh, we have CTA, which is a cloud tiering appliance, uh, all file base gets rave reviews from our customers and we're able to help them not only in our products but actually on some competitor file products to move it off to the cloud if need be, <laughs> which has actually been a, a pretty big win for us. In addition to that, Isilon has a notion of cloud pools if people haven't seen it, but again, it's a transparent, seamless uh, data mobility from Isilon from, uh, from core to the cloud, if you will. And then lastly, we have a, store, a cloud array, which is a block device that allows us to move block data from a traditional asset in to the cloud as well. So we have a handful of, uh, of products or features that are natively in certain products today. We'll be evolving that over time. You got everything. Oh, God. <laughs> but we'll be, we'll be evolving that over time too. So we want to have a more coherent, yeah. simple story for our customers, right? It doesn't matter what the data type is, we want to be able to <laughs> present it to the cloud. But you, and by that I mean EMC, was, yes. were late to the flash market, but have caught up, are now the leaders in the flash market. Yep. Phenomenal growth year over year. What did you do to, to pull that off? That's kind of counterintuitive. Uh, focus and energy, and a lot of great engineers, to be honest with you, right? And then a great sales team behind it as well. So, you know, we were late to the game. Um, you know, we made some decisions to lead with certain products and drive certain products where if we, you know, if you took a step back, I think we would have said, hey, listen, we all agreed Flash was critical. Uh, flash will be everywhere, compute, storage, network. You know, and then you could debate on the consumption model if it would be all flash systems versus hybrid systems or what have you. Yep. Uh, but at the end of the day, flash was critical and I think we're all on the same page there. In regards to how you'd want to attack the problem if it's a hybrid or all flash, that's maybe where we got a little stuck in our own way. Uh, yep. But then focus from all the teams, if it was VMAX or mid-range or extreme IO, Isilon now, Teams have done an amazing job catching up, and then working with you know Billy and Marius and the, and the go-to-market teams, they've been phenomenal. So that's you know, it's been a huge hit well, with our that's customers. A, that's a good point to my portfolio question because you guys really worked that problem hard. Yeah. I think it was a two-year window. Yes. We saw all kinds of architects, but that was then good timing on that because you were early on the trend architecturally was happening in real time. So although late to the game, yeah. things kind of played out, and you kind of shaped your portfolio up yes. during that time, kind of a forcing function. Uh, one, did that, did that was that what happened, and two. What is the current view of the portfolio right now? You, you feel comfortable about the overlap, um, gaps, <coughs> things that, that you, you think about? Yeah, absolutely. So let me take the, the media one first and go back to Flash specifically. So we learned a lot, and yes, that did help us shape our portfolios to go forward and actually uh, try to you know, focus specific um, architectures to specific use cases to make our customers successful. Uh, we, what we also learned is we don't ever want to be late again. So that's why with NVMe specifically that we actually uh, uh, were major contributors and actually a co-developer on NVMe, mm -hmm. which others can talk about about NVMe and their marketing material, they weren't actually at the table co-developing. Yeah. So you have to you're saying, if we don't get yeah. on this, we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> that's right, so we've learned and I don't want it to happen again. I want to be a learning organization yeah. and I don't want it to happen again, so we're going to be driving that uh, and we'll be a leader in NVMe. And as more immediate uh, transitions happen in Flash, there'll be more, trust me. A few years down the road beyond that we're already looking at, we'll continue to make sure that we're a leader in that space. Now in the portfolio, um, 
talk to customers all the time. They love the portfolio in the sense of that we, you know, they understand, they, they believe in the fact that no, no one size does not fit all. Right, they have said though, hey, you got a lot of products and you have to simplify. So in full transparency, that's something we've been working through uh, and we'll continue to work through that. So in, um, we will have overlap and we want overlap, it's good. Better have overlap than gaps. And, we, and Joe Tucci was a huge person on that and I, and I couldn't support more, but we want it to be planned overlap versus unplanned overlap. Because yeah. we want to make it sure we make our customers successful and we say, hey, and they, we can articulate clearly to our customers why they'd use a the product and the value it's going to drive for the use case of their application. Same thing for our sales guys, same thing for our service guys, same thing for our own engineers. We want to keep people aligned and focused on what we're trying to do, so that way we can provide a better outcome on the other side. Are you, are you looking out, you're looking out in the future, do you well, see you, anything disruptive on the, on the horizon? Is there anything that could change this industry fundamentally? Uh, I, you know, obviously I always keep cloud in the back of mind. I mean, it's still something, you know, depending on how people want to portray it or look at it, you know, it, you know, people call it a destination, some people call it a media, you know, what have you. I call it, you know, a virtual infrastructure. Depending how you want to define <laughs> it, there's, there's different a ways to go A mainframe in the sky. Yeah, what have you. You know, so I, that, one, that one always keeps me up at night depending on how things go, but uh, there's a lot of cool things going on in storage, actually, where I think, I mean, first, let's be clear. Storage, in general, maybe has, has lost some of the, 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 the sex appeal, if you will, the attractiveness of it. I think that's starting to come back with some of the things like NVMe and Cloud Ready and, and multi-dimensional scaling, and there's a whole bunch of things going around there that actually is going to kind of drive that back. Now, in addition to that, though, we all know, Internet of Things, machine learning, you know, video, it's exploding. So let's be very yeah. clear, there'll be Storage a Storage is not going is away. not going away. But the machine learning certainly is going to be well, a nice uh, jolt in the arm for optimization, optimization and automation. Yeah. yeah. There's a huge opportunity there in regards to that. So cloud is, is one of the big ones, but I think there's a lot of things, I guess headwinds, tailwinds, there's a lot of things in favor to really kind of push, this, push us forward. So. Jeff Boudreau, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the insight and candid uh, commentary and analysis and, and insight into your business. Appreciate it. You got <laughs> the storage is not going away. It's <laughs> called the data center and the cloud for a reason. It's all about the data and the value of business will be data driven. This is theCUBE bringing data to you here live from Las Vegas at Dell EMC World 2017. I'm John Furrier with Paul Gillen, back with more. Stay with us after this short break.